All right, everybody. So welcome back. All my uh, Panther fans, Panther Nation, everybody around the world, whoever may be tuning in. All right, so another episode of the Frozen Panthers Perspective. Um, right now, we're going to discuss these Carolina Panthers coaches, man. Um, I'm really I'm really excited about who we have. I'll just be honest with you. Um, you know, so I remember a uh, shout out uh, to my boy Adam Brown. You know what I'm saying? My AK side brother, he a cute dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm A5A, but it's all love. But uh, we we are the same uh, business fraternity, South Carolina State. Also, we both HBCU grads, South Carolina State. Nevertheless, that's my boy. I got to give him his props because early on, he was the one that told me, hey, I feel like we're going to go with Matt Rule from Baylor. And I was just like, how you know that? He was like, nah, trust me, man. Like, I, like he, he he's very knowledgeable, man. He's definitely one of the guys that... I spend a lot of time talking to him, you know, when it comes to Panthers, between him, my cousin CJ, and a few of my other guys, man, I really talk a lot of football with. But he really understood. He was just breaking it down. He was like, nah, you got to think about it like this. We're starting from scratch. We're thinking long term. This guy, I believe we're going to go with him. He was absolutely right. Now, at first, it may be researching more. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I feel like from right now, you know, I feel like that's a, that was a good choice. The reason why is, think about it like this. You have somebody like David Tepper, owner of, the, owner of the team, you know, fairly new. He's only been here for about, what, two years now? He's a businessman. His perspective is building things, systematic approaches. Now, I don't claim to know everything about business, but, you know, I'm 2019 graduate of the Robert A. Smith School of Business University of Maryland. Go Terrapins. I'm uh, very proud of that. And a lot of things that I learned based on business were systematic approaches to things. All right. So it is, if you're building something from the ground up, you know, you have to put in the right team. You have to have long-term vision. You have to have short-term goals. And a lot of times in business, people want somebody with a track record of success. Now let's look at Matt Rule, for instance, right? Matt Rule built uh, the program at Temple. Um, you know, really worked with that program, uh, made them successful while he was there, moved on to Baylor, did the same thing. When you talk to the majority of his players, all of the interviews that I've seen, even people that may have gone on to other teams or even might be in the pros now, don't necessarily even have a reason to to, to be nice, if you will, because if you will, they're not connected to him in that way anymore. Always seem to kind of have something really good to say about him. And they say that he taught us how to be professionals. He taught us how to be professionals, like how to focus, like and my tenure and being in college and undergrad, grad school, one of the most important things that my professor could have taught us or did teach us was, you know, shout out to South Carolina State too. Um, but they taught us to be professionals in our field. And for him to teach his players at an early age, hey, listen, be professionals. That's important. But also the fact that he had a good rapport with them uh, was really good. And then the fact that his whole thing was we're about building systems. He said, when I took over Temple, I knew that I had to build a system of success. I had to create an understanding expectation that began with me. Same thing that happened when he went to Baylor. Um, I believe it's going to be the same thing here. Um, and honestly, think about it like this. One of the things that I was saying was when the coaching staff, uh, well, actually, that would have been upper management, Mr. Tepper, uh, Marty Herney, um, you know, all these guys, when they brought him in, they brought him in on a seven-year, $60 million contract. Bread, bread, bread. But... The whole perspective of that is long-term thinking, not just trying to bring in somebody that says, um, you know, I've coached for a few years. I want to try something one or two years. They're saying that that's not what this is about. You have Tepper saying that this is my team. I'm thinking long-term. I want long-term results. I want to bring somebody with that perspective in. And I feel like Matt Rule is looking at it from that perspective, right? That he wants to build a winning organization. And because of that, you know, he's going to make some decisions that may ruffle the feathers of the long-term fans that have been used to things being done a certain type of way. But we have to be open-minded. We have to respect the fact that this man has showed on, you know, at the college level, even if you say, well, he just done college, who cares? He understands football. He understands rapport with people. He understands how to build a successful uh, working, you know, body, which is, you know, the football team. We got to respect that. So uh, that's that's really kind of in a nutshell with the whole thing with Matt Rule is. And he's saying that he wants to start off with him. He's saying that I realize that my players, my coaches, everybody needs to see me at the top of my game, you know, and just being sharp and focused and putting in the work every day. I respect that about him. Um, when we look at Joe Brady, right? Joe Brady, the offensive coordinator. 
Joe Brady, as you know, uh, just won national championship with LSU Tigers. They put up, you know, an amazing, um, you know, championship game. They had a really great season. There's no way around, you know, saying that. The fellow is brilliant with, you know, his offensive approach with things with, you know, like the passing game and all this other stuff. Um, we're, think about where the Panthers are. NFC South, we have some of the most prolific quarterbacks, really, in history. I would say two at least, like, that Ryan Cool, I ain't trying to hate on him, but let's be real. It's a difference when you're looking at Drew Brees and Tom Brady now, right? Look at what they have going on. The same way we had to build our defense to be prepared to have cornerbacks and safeties that can keep up with these receivers running four threes, these freaks of nature that's running four threes. Like, what's my man name from the Falcons? Um, Julio. Like, this dude, like, 6'5", and he run a 4'4", four, four or something. That's ridiculous, man. You got to be prepared for that. But the same concept is... Their defenses are also building for that. So our offenses have to be ready. Now, when you look at, you know, somebody like Joe Brady and seeing what he's been able to do recently, right? Um, just to kind of like a little bit about his background. Uh, so if, I, if I'm sick, I think uh, he went to William & Mary University. Shout out. I went down there. It's a real cool campus, kind of like a little chill type college, man. Very historical. We took my students down there when I was teaching in D.C. Uh, it was beautiful, man. Take my my, my, kid, my kids from the hood down there, man, and show them that. It was, we had so much fun that day. But nevertheless, um, you know, he played for them, and he actually went back and coached for them. And then after that, he went and he, uh, you know, coached at LSU and everything like that. So when you take somebody who has had his fair share of experience, but is has this mindset on understanding things. Some people just understand the X's and O's. You know, they just understand that, hey, listen, if I can move this, whatever, if I can, if I have this firepower from these receivers, if, if we're running these types of sets, if we're blocking this type of way, they, he has a different kind of understanding of of how to to get that ball in the air and get it to the right people. Right. Um, you look at uh, what's my man named Joe Burrow and he he's great. But I, I believe that a lot of that came from um, having this kind of coaching. I'm very excited about that because we we dealing with a new pretty much a new quarterback. Well, not pretty much. You know, uh, Teddy Bridgewater is a new quarterback for us. You know, um, we have um, we have, you know, the same weapons that we had last year for the most part with a few additions. But when you're looking at people like Curtis Samuel or DJ Moore, shout out Terrapins, you already know that's Maryland. Um, when you have guys like that, keep in mind that these guys are still fairly new. So they don't have a whole lot of old habits, maybe that weren't as successful, they can't be coached out of them. And if they're seeing the success that this coach is having or whatever the case may be, and still kind of being younger guys trying to build their respect and, and, and gain a certain level of whatever knowledge or whatever, they're going to be open to things. So now we're having pretty much a new system all together that's going to work well for us, I believe. I'm very excited about that hire. I'm not even going to lie to you. When I when I when I saw that he won, it's almost like when um coach Venables at Clemson. It's almost like I wanted him like a year ago to be our defensive coordinator. When I saw what he built there, I'm like I want this guy to come and play, you know, and, and coordinate for us because he understands defenses. That that can be, you know, the same thing could be said about somebody like Joe Brady. So I'm very happy that he's here. Um, and then you have Phil Snow, uh, defensive coordinator, who is very, very, uh, you know, well-versed, has been around in a few teams. Oh, and one more thing real quick to circle back. Joe Brady also did a stint with the New Orleans Saints. That's very valuable for us because we're in NFC South, all right? So we have to play them twice a year. And so now to have a quarterback that has played, you know, for the Saints, um, and now have a coach that has experience there that knows how their head coach thinks or whatever, that's very helpful on multiple reasons. One, because, you know, he may know some things about how to plan for that team that other other people may not know. Um, but also he's worked under a really great coach, right? So if he knows kind of like how he thinks, that's also another aspect that we can bring to our team. That's very important. All right. So now just to move on to Phil Snow. One of the things I like about Phil Snow is Phil Snow, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was UCLA. So uh, might have been like early on in, um, in Coach Rule's career, he actually worked for uh, Phil Snow. And it's funny because Phil Snow made a joke where he said like, you know, he used to get my coffee, now I'm getting his. And I'm like, well, that's funny because you never know who how things are going to go later on. So it's always important to treat people fairly and right or whatever. But that's something that made me feel like this guy is probably somebody of a strong character because think about it like this. We all have bosses of people that we worked for in the past that, if you had an opportunity to run something, 
you would not bring that person on because of how they treat you. They were a terrible person. They were rude. They were whatever. You would never do anything to benefit that person, you know, most likely, or you don't feel like that person's energy or whatever is going to help make what you're building successful now that you have the control of that. I feel like with something like that, he sees the value there because he was with him with Baylor and everything like that, but he sees the value there that, you know, that he's brought this man along with him, with his career, because also probably what he taught him and what he also learned from him. Um, you know, so I feel real good about that, their familiarity. I feel like he understands Matt Rule. And Matt Rule has been fair, I believe, in really trying to select the right people for the job. He didn't just bring his whole Baylor staff with him. Um, you know, he was selecting people, even some of his players. He kind of, you know, if I'm not mistaken, it was a player when we uh, drafted in the first round this year. I think it was like a player that was available that was really good, you know, or the second round, whatever. But either way, he didn't pick that player. And, you know, I know he has love for his players, but I think he's trying to do what's best for this team and this system. So for him to pick this coach and he has his familiarity with them, I believe that he picked them for the right reasons. So I'm I'm really good with that that selection as well. And then I believe we have a, a Chase Blackburn. Now, he actually is the, um, the uh, special teams coach. Now, what I'll say is, and I really just focus on those main positions, you know, much respect to all other coaches, but these are the main positions that everything else feeds into. And um, when you're looking at uh, Chase Blackburn, to have somebody that was successful when he played in the NFL, um, as far as like, you know, playing special teams, and he really understood the importance of special teams. Special teams is important for many reasons. Um, if you're looking at the perspective of that's how a lot of players make the squad. Um, you know, they, you know, you may just be somebody where your position may be wide receiver or running back or whatever, but the fact that you're fast, you got sure hands, they may put you in the back to be able to catch that ball. And then now, you know, you can show what you can do. Now the coach is looking at you differently. Um, you may be the next man up in some situation. Now you have an opportunity to step up and handle that because you were ready when it was your time. So special teams is very important. Or even look at something like if you play in a, a defensive role, right? And, you know, you could be, I don't know, linebacker, safety, who, who knows, whatever. And you're playing special teams when these players are running down the field and you're just getting hit after hit, you tracking the ball. That might show these coaches, hey, listen, you know, this guy right here has more intangibles than we thought. Perhaps we need to get this dude a chance, right? And I feel like that's that's very important when it comes down to that. Now, outside of that, special teams can win you games or lose you games. If you don't have the right kickers, punters, all this other stuff to position you, then that's kind of how you're going to start off when you get on the field. So let's just say if you have um, kickers or punters that can pin that ball where it needs to be at and your, your special teams can get down there in advance and stop them from getting you know any type of good position on the field, now your defense, your offense don't have to work but so hard if they're positioned in the right way. You see what I'm saying? You know, interchangeably, you know what I'm saying with that. But nevertheless... I feel like that's important to have people that can do that position well, just because you want to make sure that, you know, or, or coach that position well, rather, because you want to make sure that all aspects of your team are strong. So if we have a really good special teams coach that can have the eye on who to select, who to put in these positions and actually to know what to do right now, is this the time? Maybe you might think like a typical kickoff, but I believe that we can have this onside kick. Like I remember, uh, when Thomas Davis, it was one year they used to tease Thomas Davis because he was on hands team. It was like, man, you ain't, you ain't like you a ball hawk out here. Like, why are you around here? Like, you know, like uh, on, you know, trying to catch the ball, whatever the case may be. But when he was on the onside kickoff and, um, you know, like when uh, when they kicked the, when they kicked the ball, he just caught that thing perfectly. His timing was perfect. He was able to jump up, boom, pull that down out of the sky. And he was able to do that basically because, you know, he had been, you know, prepared for that. But coaches understood that, yes, this dude is a linebacker or whatever the case may be. But he is prepared for this task. And that decision helped win a game. So that is super important to have the right people in place on all aspects of the, of, of, of the field at all different time, offense, defense. And I would say just like those two things are important, special teams are super important. So I think that's really good to see uh, those guys positioned in this coaching, you know, uh, you know, this coaching staff. I'm very confident right now uh, about that. And once again, let's keep in mind that we're talking about seven-year building period. Now, that's not to say that this man is waiting to shoot to win a Super Bowl in, seven, in the seventh year, but that's just saying that he feels comfortable and confident to make his decisions and bring in his people so that way they can build the right way. So the same way he built Temple and built Baylor, 
he's now looking at the Panthers to make us a winning team. And these coaches, I believe, are bringing the things to, you know, to, to the forefront that are going to help with that. So shout out to the coaching squad. Man, make us proud. I hope y'all making the right decisions, picking the right people. Some of the people y'all cut, I'm a little like, eh, I don't know about. I feel like maybe some of the people should have stuck around. But nevertheless, I... I'm not at practice, and honestly, we can't even really see practice that much because of all the social distancing. So maybe they know some things we don't know. But nevertheless, I'm rocking with y'all. I want the best. Panther Nation, support our coaching staff and our team.